Displaying Ruby elements is better with line breaks. Promise.try makes it easier to chain promises. Pointer event is extended to uniquely identify multiple pens. And there's plenty more. I'm Adriana Jara. Let's dive in and see what's new for developers in Chrome 128. The Ruby element enhances text presentation, especially for East Asian languages. It lets you display phonetic annotations or other supplemental information above or beside base text. A Ruby element consists of two main parts, Ruby base, which is the main text, and Ruby text, which is the annotation text markup with the element. Previously, if a Ruby base or Ruby text was longer than a whole line, they were wrapped individually, creating layout challenges. Now, Line Breakable Ruby places wrapped Ruby annotation text over wrapped base text, achieving ideal text rendering. Visit the article in the description for more information about the Ruby element and the related CSS Ruby Align property, which is also part of Chrome 128. Promise.try makes it easier to handle errors with promises. It fixes the use case where you have a function, f. This function may be async and return a promise, or it may not. So you'd like to wrap it in a promise. Then if it is async or if it throws, you can still use the same promise semantics to handle errors. One way to achieve this is the code on the screen. But f is run asynchronously when it might not be necessary. To avoid this problem, you need to use the code on the screen to create a new promise. Promise.try is the simple, straightforward way to accomplish the same, allowing you to start a promise chain where you can catch all errors in .catch handlers, instead of having to handle both synchronous and asynchronous exception flows. To learn more, check out the article in the description. Developers didn't have a way to distinguish between two individual pens on an ink-enabled digitizer. Now, the pointer event interface was extended to include a new attribute, device properties, and it contains the attribute unique ID that represents a session persistent document isolated unique identifier that a developer can reliably use to identify individual pens interacting with the page. With this change, developers could, for example, set a specific colors or pen shapes for each device interacting with the digitizer. Visit the article in the description for the pointer event interface documentation. And of course, there is plenty more. The CSS Zoom property is now aligned with the latest standard. Audio context creation and audio rendering errors are now reported through audiocontext.onError. The DevTools Animations panel now captures animations and you can edit keyframes live. All the details, including links, docs, and specs, are in the post linked in the description. Hit the subscribe button now so that you don't miss the latest Chrome DevTools video, the CSS podcast, and more. Yo soy Adriana Jara, and as soon as Chrome 129 is released, I'll be right here to tell you what's new in Chrome. <laughs>